Cross-country racing has evolved in the last few years, become much more intense. Aerobic fitness is still really important, but a good level of strength and skill is vitally important as well. We've seen some great technical features, big rock gardens, rooty sections, and even some jumps. Today, we have Liam Colleen with us, Olympian, Commonwealth gold medalist, and five-time national champion. So Liam, show us the ropes. Oh, let's right. go, Neil. Jesus. Can I get clipped in? So Liam, you've been racing for quite a long time. You started in, what, mid-90s? How have things changed in the last few years cross-country? Yeah, when I first started to race, typical mountain bike lap was 25, 30 minutes long. Uh, we'd, and the elite guys would race for over two hours. Now, race duration's down to about an hour and 30, hour and 40 minutes. Laps are around the 15 minute mark. They're a lot, a lot more compact and aggressive. Um, We've seen the World Cups and the Olympics in London that you raced. The trails are actually pretty gnarly now, the man-made sections, really technical. Does that prove like a different is strength involved and skill, I suppose, quite a lot as well? It's a different challenge? Yeah, it's still an endurance sport, but um, you need to train you know, high top end, multiple sprints, surges for the whole, whole of the race. Um, yeah, like you said, the course is more aggressive man-made features which add a lot more technical element to the to the lap. So what about base miles? What would be your typical session? Yeah, you still need to keep on top of your aerobic and endurance rides. So a typical ride would be around a three hours, three hour mark. I'd probably uh, put three or four blocks of 10 minutes in there yeah. where I'm just, you know, just going from steady, you know, 60 to 70 percent effort and maybe just bump it up to 80% and be a bit more focused for those 10 minute blocks. And how would you monitor that? Do you use heart rate or power? Yeah, I still use heart rate. Um, lots of people use power now, but I think heart rate, you can, you can, you can, get, you can do a lot with heart rate. Um, so I'd typically work at, for a ride like that, maybe um, 70 to 80% max heart rate. Okay, cool. Intervals are that word that no matter what mountain bike discipline you're racing, well, they spark that little bit of fear. But for cross country, when you're negotiating hard climbs, short bursts, and you really need to get that power, they're essential. Liam, how do you do it in intervals and how do they benefit your training? Yeah, intervals are really crucial for getting your body used to going above threshold from pretty much minute one till you cross the finish line of a cross country race. So. I try to work in two to three interval sessions during the week. Um, a typical block of intervals might be five five minute efforts. So you, you're working just above threshold for that five minutes. Another, another session might be two blocks of four 30 second efforts. And those 30 seconds are really, you know, way above race pace but it just gets your muscles used to firing at that really hard intensity. What sort of bike do you do them on? Do you do them on your cross country bike, the road bike, or do you do them indoors on the turbo trainer? Yeah, there's numerous ways to do interval sessions. Um, I, th I think for the, for the mountain biker, doing them off road is probably the best, best way to do them. So you're getting used to that specific effort off road. Um, you know, it's, it's a higher torque than you typically find on the road. So just getting the body used to firing yeah. off-road is a really good way to do it. Yeah, and of course negotiating between sort of roots and rocks and getting that yeah. power down. And I actually believe that you're now going to take me and uh, you're going to push me through my sort of power zone and we're going to do an interval together. Yeah, well, we've had a bit of a warm-up, so let's yeah. give it a go. Ten of them would be hard work. <laughs> so 
So Liam, we've talked a little bit about the fitness side of cross country racing, but you know, as you've said, as you've said, uh, that doesn't always translate to the fastest guy or girl. Um, you know, how do you translate that that fitness to speed on the trail? Yeah, it's about um, line choice, carrying momentum, be aware of the course changing during the, the race, number of riders if it's muddy, line choices will change throughout the race. So it's it's really being adaptable, but yeah. Getting used to flowing with the trail, yeah. head up, looking for smooth line choices. That must be really hard at race pace when you're at maximum, if not very close, heart rate. You, you know, it must be very hard to ride the bike fast in those same conditions. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's um, trainable though. It's, 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 it's tough to do, but a good way i found to train specifically for that is to uh, make a loop, maybe fairly short, around the five minute mark maybe include a couple of punchy climbs just to get your heart rate up there and incorporate some technical sections. So you're, you're cresting the top of a climb and you've got to set up, prepare yourself for the challenge and descent. Yeah. And just repeat that, you know, you could repeat that four, five, six times and that would really be a good, good specific session. What about, you know, the downhills, you obviously got to try and go as fast as you can, like say with your maximum heart rate. Are you trying to rest as well as carry as much speed as possible? You're trying to find a bit of recovery, yes. Yeah. So, you, you, you know, you have to go hard on the climb, but it's a balance between going hard and not too hard that you, you have to kind of focus and slow down on the descent. So it's, it's, it's about finding that, that balancing point. So Liam, as cross country has changed, become punchier, so has the physique of the top riders. You see, you know, not so many flyweights now. Do you do any gym work as well? Yeah, you're right. The typical cross country rider now is carries a bit more muscle, upper body than they used to. But it's, it's you know, that power to weight is still crucial. So the guys are spending maybe two, three sessions per week in the gym, um, but they're focusing on powerful, fast exercises that will give them that strength and explosive strength, um, but not building too much bulk. What about cross training away from the bike? Do you do any of that? Yeah, ride other bikes, you know, the road bike, maybe a slightly heavier trail bike. Um, I know guys ride motocross as well, because that really good, good skills training and you get the extra extra weight that you've got to manhandle, which you know, complements the mountain bike. Um, so yeah, cross training's definitely got a place. Cheers Liam for showing us the ropes, telling us all about training for cross country. If you viewers at home want to watch some more cool training videos, you can click up there for the playlist, and that includes how to train for downhill and for enduro. Or if you'd like to get a better understanding of cross country mountain biking, why don't you click down there for what is cross country? And to subscribe, click here. Give thumbs up if you enjoyed watching Liam beast us around the woods.